I liked it. I don't, I don't know. I, I really liked it. There was a Nintendo Direct today, uh, which a lot of people apparently didn't know about. Also kind of weird that they didn't do a live premiere for this one like they normally do, uh, and they just dropped the entire video, which I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really love. I still reacted to it live, but a lot of people just skipped to the end and gave me spoilers. That said, uh, I already knew that Mario and Rabbids was going to be shown and a certain <laughs> Atlas game. I, 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 I kind of knew it was going to be there, but I, I still, I didn't believe it because I've been wanting this to happen for like five, literally five years. I, I, okay, so Nintendo released a partner mini Nintendo Direct today, which I gotta, I gotta be honest, wasn't what any of us really wanted out of a Nintendo Direct this month, uh, because it's E3 season, or at least what usually would be. It's Summer Game Fest, and we have Nintendo Directs throughout the year. Usually there's one in February, one during summer now, and then one at the end of the year. But the summer ones, the E3 ones, are always the best. It's when Nintendo saves the good stuff, and they really pop off. Uh, some of the best announcements and coolest moments we've ever had were at Nintendo Directs during E3, during summer. So hearing that one was coming on the 15th, 16th, 29th, whenever all the leaks said it would happen, and then it ended up actually happening on the 28th, it was exciting because we knew it would be amazing. But then we had the Xenoblade Direct, which is fine, not for me, and then a partner Direct. Didn't exactly set the bar very high, but I will say for a partner showcase direct, meaning nothing first party Nintendo is going to be shown and purely focusing on the third party support that Nintendo Switch gets, I think it was straight fire. It was about as 10 out of 10 as a partner showcase could be, at least for me and what I'm looking for. Hi. We just recently drove from Texas here to PA. It was a three day drive and the whole way, all we ate was gas station food and Twinkies, which is pretty much the same thing. So you have no idea how nice it was to rock up day one and have a box filled with delicious low calorie meals right on our doorstep. There was actually six of them, but uh, we, we were hungry. That's what I'm saying. We've already eaten two of them. I gotta film this before I eat the rest. Fitness starts with food, and Factor makes it possible for you to achieve your daily goals through nutritious, purposeful eating. Factor offers keto, chef's choice, veggie, and vegan options, as well as low calorie, which are the ones that I go for. The best part is, with Factor, there's literally no meal prep. I'm gonna reach over here and grab a knife. This is not a knife. That's not a knife. This is a butter knife. <laughs> Couple of stabs for ventilation. Two minutes in the microwave, and then by the time I'm done even with this sponsor read, I'll have dinner. Quick and easy, no mess, no cleanup, other than this butter knife, which is now clean too. The meal plans offer a ton of variety, they change weekly, and there's over 25 meals and over 35 add-on options. So we already have a minute left on that, which is almost just enough time for me to tell you to grab some by going and clicking the link down below, which is go.factor75.com forward slash beat-em-ups120. Why 120, you might be asking? Not because 120 seconds is almost as long as it takes to cook the meals, but because you get $120 off when you use my code. That's $120 of free food. Dinner. So they started by showing off a bunch of Monster Hunter Sunbreak, which is completely fair to do because that game drops in a couple of days at this point. I say game because it is DLC for Monster Hunter Rise, but it's like $40 and a massive expansion that you may as well just count as a brand new game. It may as well just be the sequel to Monster Hunter Rise, but all incorporated into the same game. Then I literally said this, I think, during a panel I had this weekend at Too Many Games, but someone was like, what What would you, what game would that? No one really talks about coming to Switch, would you want to see? And I said, near freaking Automata. I think it's a perfect Nintendo Switch game. I was baffled it hasn't happened yet. It was on PlayStation 4, and we've had games like Witcher from PlayStation 4 come to the Switch, so why couldn't it happen? And sure enough, near Automata, the end of Your Heart Edition, which has Nintendo Switch exclusive outfits and, and accessories and items and things and bleh, but it's that full game on the Switch, which I just can't stress enough how perfect I think that game is for the console. A little hack and slashy, a little bullet hell, a little bit of everything actually. 
but just a really fun game to have on the go. So immediately we started super strong. Then we started getting things sprinkled in that we hadn't seen before, like this really stylish game that's coming in 2023, Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. I'm actually intrigued by that. Then almost like a meme, Super Bomberman R2. I don't... 2023, I didn't really like, nobody really liked Bomberman R. And weirdly, a, a big reason why I didn't like it is because it just didn't fit the tone of Bomberman. It didn't look fun. It was a muted color scheme. And, and here again, we're seeing more of that same game that I didn't think anyone really liked. The entire Mega Man Legacy Collection, Mega Man Batman Network, Me ba it is 9 a.m. Yeah, give me, cut, cut me some slack. Then a remake, or should I say repack, of Pac-Man World. Uh, wh who was asking for that? <laughs> then something really cute, a little black and white artistic game with two two little god cuties called Bl Blanc, which is apparently a Nintendo Switch exclusive, and you can play it in two-player. So I know what Kim and I are going to do whenever this game finally comes out in February of next year. Then... I, oh my God. Monkey Island! Pirating is in my blood. Monkey Island! 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 Yo! 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 I, I, <laughs> I love Monkey Island. Monkey Island was one of my first ever video games. It's why I love point and clicks. I talk about Monkey Island way more than I should. <laughs> and brand new one is coming to Switch. Switch first, apparently, as well. I couldn't be more excited. It sounds like they have all the original voice actors. It's in a new weird art style that is reminiscent of the original art style. I'm not completely sold on it yet, but we're getting brand new Monkey Island. So my reaction speaks for itself. This is my favorite direct ever. This is my favorite direct ever. Mario and Rabbit Sparks and Hope is the only thing that I knew was for sure going to be shown in this event. And they took a decent amount of time on it to show how the gameplay works. It looks very similar to the first one. Gorgeous visuals. I I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to tell you. It's, uh, it's kind of like XCOM, but with Nintendo spliced with rabbits. And the first one was really fun. This is one of those games that you either just love or you don't, I guess. Um, uh, you know, uh, something looks kind of like a mobile game, a train game, uh, yeah, a little cartoony, a uh, hand-drawn game. It kind of looks fun, actually. I don't mind that at all. We got to look at Sonic Frontiers, and I got to say, it doesn't look great. <laughs> I, I appreciate that they did show us gameplay of the Switch version. And this trailer is the first time that I saw things about the game that actually does look pretty fun. There's some like throwback levels that it seems like they have a lot of weird and wackies that I, that it does, the gameplay does look fun. I gotta be honest, it looks fun. But the art style is very jarring to me and the Switch gameplay they showed is clearly struggling. Like, and, and remember, this is what they chose to show. The very first clip has a panning shot of flowers and even like the flowers are like glitching in and out, assets loading in really weirdly. There's another panning shot pretty early in the trailer where whole chunks of the rock face is like disappearing as the camera pulls away. It's hard for me not to notice those things. Overall, the resolution is obviously very low and just the textures are very blah. <laughs> A Disney Sims game, which I'm not gonna lie. And it looks fire. Uh, Live Alive, we saw more of that. Story of Seasons, Minecraft Legends, Dragon Quest Treasures, which I love Dragon Quest, but I'm not sold on this one yet. Wh Portal is a game I feel should have been on Switch already. I find it really weird that uh, it took this long to put the Portal games on the Switch, but they're here. Uh, another Harvest game called Harvest Stella meshed in with RPG mechanics and some pretty cool looking visuals. So I might grab that. And then I blasted and rushed through everything other than Monkey Island to get to the end here because sure enough, it's finally happening and it feels unreal. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel real. 
I, I'm, I feel like I'm gonna wake up. It is really early. I could still be sleeping and this is all just a beautiful dream. I have wanted Persona 5 on Switch ever since the game released. In fact, when I made my fake April Fool's Direct, which some of you might remember, it was a long time ago now, like the first game I fake announced coming to the Switch was Persona 5, because even back then, that was what everyone wanted. That was the main hype. That was the one game that if you asked what should come to Switch, everyone said Persona 5. I was on that train, I've been on that train, I've never let up on that train. And the reason why it was so expected today is because recently they announced it was coming to Xbox and PC, and it just doesn't make sense for Persona 5 to be everywhere other than Switch, especially when we have Persona 5 strikers already. And uh, I mean, Atlas knows, Nintendo knows how hype this is because they saved it for the very last spot and it had its own fully voice acted by Morgana announcement that Persona 5, yes, is finally coming to Nintendo Switch. Now, there's a caveat here for me. I'm very, very, very excited about this. I'm glad that I can finally play it portable. It just sucks big booty cheeks that they announced it coming to PC a couple weeks ago because I have a Steam Deck. That was very hype for me. So the wind was taken a little bit out of the sails here. I wish this was announced first and was a complete surprise secret. The cat was a little bit out of the bag. But it gets even better because as well as the full Persona 5 Royale experience coming portably to the Switch, not a cloud-based version either, which is better better, uh, we also got Persona 4 Golden as well as Persona 3, which is insane. Golden is my favorite JRPG of all time. I really love 5. It's up there in my top 5, but it... There was something about 4 that I really love. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And I think overall, as far as a partner showcase mini direct, this was best case scenario, man. I mean, so many of us were waiting for the Persona games to come to Switch. That is a huge announcement. For me personally, Monkey Island is so exciting. The fact that also Monkey Island is going to be a timed exclusive on Switch is cool for me because I love my Switch, I love Monkey Island, it's like my two worlds colliding, and just a ton of cool announcements. Near Automata, a bunch of other really cool things spliced in here or there. You know, it's a partner showcase. I will say what is disappointing is that it is just a partner showcase, you know? that There's two separate things here. There's one, it's a partner showcase, and for a partner showcase, it was amazing. But there's the other side of it where it is just a partner showcase. And I could totally get people being upset or bummed out about that because at E3 time, we don't get a partner showcase. We get a full E3 and it's needed right now. There's a lot of things we don't really have answers on or things we don't really know about. Where is Metroid Prime 4? When exactly is Breath of the Wild coming? What's happening next year? What is going on? Now really is the time that we need to know about a lot of this stuff, but it's what we got. And for it being what we got, I think it was really great. I'm really happy about a lot of it. Uh, but what did you think of the direct? That's just my thoughts. You can leave a comment down below, like the video. Also, I am live tonight on Twitch playing Fall Guys on Nintendo Switch. If you want to come hang out, twitch.tv forward slash beat em ups. Oh, and Nintendo podcast. Make sure you go follow that new episode on Thursday. Bob and I are going to go over this uh, direct together. And uh, it's going to be interesting because you know how I feel about it. He's going to hate everything that I love. In fact, he's probably going to hate everything. So we're going to fight each other. I can feel it. All right. I love you guys. Bye.